The Green Bay Packers just got a double dose of bad news in their win over Chicago. I'm going to break that down for you guys in this video. We will also talk about and break down yesterday's win in Chicago. So please listen to the video in its entirety. And if you like the content at the end, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Let's jump into it. What's the first part of the double dose of bad news coming out of Green Bay? Well, it's Jair Alexander's injury. Not great news for the Packers. But also at the same time, encouraging news that Ian Rappaport did report. This is just a continuation of the same knee injury, and he's going to be okay. Just how long is he going to be out? Well, it says right here, it's unclear at this point, but Rappaport's update rules out a significant long-term absence. But Alexander might be hard-pressed to return in time to play against the Niners this upcoming Sunday afternoon. Considering Alexander's first suffered an injury October 27th and is still dealing with the same effects on November 17th. It's safe to say this could be a multi-week injury issue for the Green Bay Packers and their secondary is completely compromised when Jair is not out there, which then leads to frustration on my part. Why Jeff Halfley did not go out and get a four-time Pro Bowl Marshawn Lattimore to add and compliment Jair to the secondary because if Jair goes out, which he's been known to have some, you know, prone prone to injuries, Marshawn Lattimore could have been there and they could have been doing just fine. However, now they're depleted and this is a very vulnerable secondary leading into two important games against the Niners and the Dolphins. What did the uh, commanders have to give up for Lattimore? Well, they trade a third fourth and sixth round pick. And in return, again, they get a proven four-time Pro Bowl corner and a fifth round pick. I think Brian Gutekunst should have pulled the trigger on that trade. We know how much he loves his draft capital. I think this is an absolute miss for Gutekunst in going and getting some depth, much needed depth to our secondary in Green Bay. And, and with a, an injury like Jair's, it just shows how thin we are and depleted there because why is that? Well, you saw what Caleb Williams and a struggling offense was able to do against the Packers. The second part of the double dose of bad news for Green Bay is that our defense looks like they are in trouble. Coming after a bye week, I thought Jeff Halfley's defense would have uh, had a better performance and what a game to to kind of get your sea legs underneath you and start um, building some momentum for the second half of the season than against a struggling offensive Chicago Bears team that hasn't put up a touchdown in the last three games they do against the Packers and if you take a look let's look let's look at um their performance the week prior against the Patriots the Patriots 3 and 7 record they put up um uh, here's what the Patriots defense did they only allowed 142 yards of total offense well what did the packers allow 391 total yards of offense was that because of their new oc thomas brown i doubt it i think it had more to do with the fact that the packers have just been struggling on defense and and it really showed in this performance the Patriots allowed 69 yards of passing offense for caleb williams the packers allowed 212 rushing yards 73 to the packers 179 yards, Caleb Williams being one of the bigger performers in that as well. But here's the killer for me, third down efficiency against the Patriots. The Bears were one for 14. Well, against the Packers, they were nine of 16 and three uh, for three on fourth down efficiency. Not great news for the Packers. Again, this is not a like you're, you're going against one of the better teams in the league. This is the Chicago Bears offense that has been completely struggling. Yes, they were at home. Yes, they do have a new OC. And yes, Caleb Williams was owning some stuff in the locker room prior to with his teammates and all of that. And so they, you know, and this is a big game for them. This is a big rivalry game, but the Packers defense did not show up, which could mean danger for the Packers, especially with the injury to Jair Alexander. Let's take a look at the stat line overall. Again, we just went over some of the stats there, but when we start talking about Jeff Halfley and what he's been able to do thus far to in, in the season, takeaways were the big category that we were leading in. Well, going back a few weeks ago, against Houston, we lost that turnover category zero to three. Okay. So we were minus three in the turnover category, takeaway category. Um, but we still came away with a win, which is great news for the Packers is that they're still finding ways to win when they're losing the takeaway category, but that's not sustainable. That is not a playoff Super Bowl type caliber team against Jacksonville. We did win the takeaway category two to one against Detroit. We were 
0 and 1 in the takeaway category. Then we had the bye week, and then we lose the takeaway category to the Bears. I thought we were going to win that takeaway category. I thought we were going to put more pressure than we did on Caleb Williams, um, which then was going to force him into making some poor decisions. I thought our defense didn't look great at times. And that third and 19th situation that the Packers found themselves in at the end of the game, I was super disappointed that Halfley sent pressure on first and second down. They came away with sacks. They're in a third and 19 situation. What better time to then send the house on a third and 19 situation where he's either going to have to be forced to get rid of the ball real quickly or get another sack and then be absolutely uh, in a, in a, in a no win situation on fourth down, but instead they found themselves fourth in three. And then Keyshawn allowed um, a rookie wide receiver, Roma Dunze to go and make that back shoulder catch, um, which then set them up very good. So let's take a look and we're going to, we're going to look at that highlight here in a second, but Caleb Williams, 23 of 31. He had a passer rating of 95, one of his best performance. I think it was his second best performance of the year, 231 yards. But better than that, he had nine carries for 70 yards. He was doing it with his legs, doing with his arms. And this is a quarterback that has completely struggled. So for the Packers to give him the confidence that he needs disappoints uh, me as a Packer fan because I'm like, okay, this is a Bears team that is struggling. We could have put the dagger in them and for their season completely. Now they develop a little bit of confidence under Caleb Williams and with the team. So um, you look at Jordan Love, Jordan Love, 13 of 17. They didn't pass the ball a whole lot. He, he had 261 yards on 13 completions. That's huge. Yes, he did have that bad overthrow in the red zone and in the end zone, um, which was which was killer. Um, and he seems to be throwing about one of those a game. Um, I'm hoping that he can. He looked much much better. You can tell he's healthy. You can tell that he was 100 percent out there. Uh, I thought he looked really good. I thought Jordan Love looked absolutely very good, and he he on the field and um, did it with his legs as well. Four rushes, 18 yards, and had a touchdown. Josh Jacobs, 18 carries, 76 yards, and a touchdown. Josh Jacobs just looks like an absolute beast and one of those guys that if you have to lean into him a little bit more, you absolutely can. He can take it to the playoffs. I, I feel that confidently, and I think Jordan Love is going to be just fine. Christian Watson, Watson shows up in a huge way, and this is one of those guys that you start hearing is Matt LaFleur going to incorporate a little bit more of Watson? This dude can be a threat when healthy. Four receptions, 150 yards, and had that monster catch at the end of the game and then got up and, and ran, which then led to Jordan Love doing it with his legs. Josh Jacobs, four receptions, 58 yards. He can do both things, right? He can catch and he can run. Jaden Reed um, continued to have slow performances. Um, two catches, 23 yards in that touchdown, That uh, the first touchdown of the game for the Packers. Romeo Dobbs had a big drop in the game, but he, he also had a big catch in the game. Uh, I really like Romeo Dobbs. Dontavian Wicks was absolutely shut out again. Dontavian Wicks, I think they're starting to see, okay, maybe we should get other guys more involved. Um, that has just Wicks's drop ratio has just been off the charts for the Packers. But the big story in this game is their special team. So it says right here, Kenny Clark, um, of course, was was came out and said, hey, we knew that we were going to block that field goal. It 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 wasn't simply bravado. Special teams coach Rich Bisaccia saw a weakness in the Bears field goal blocking um, unit and struggled uh, uh, with a struggling guard situation and kicker Santos, who had a low trajectory with his kicks. Rich said our team uh, said to our team last night, this is what Kenny Clark said. I will not understand if we come out of this game without a block, whether it's um, a, a field goal or an extra attempt. And that's exactly what they did. They came away with a massive block when they absolutely needed it. Let's take a look at this. This is absolutely sweet. I'm going to play some sound on this. This is coming from within a booth. So you get to hear um, some sweet sound here in a second. Kick is no good. I uh, what a what a performance by Rich Bisaccia and the special teams. I absolutely loved it. But man, if we are looking to a particular player that I am most disappointed in on this Packer squad, and I want you guys to leave your comments, let me know which Packer player has absolutely disappointed you the most this season. To me, 
hands down, without a doubt, has been Quay Walker. This is a guy that I think the Packers need to think about benching and putting Wilson in his stead. Quay Walker has been just a complete disappointment. He's putting himself in bad situations um, and then also not coming away with tackles. Leave your comments. Let me know your thoughts. A win is a win. The Packers come away with a win, although it wasn't pretty, and they, they gave the Bears some confidence. I'm still pumped that they got a win, a much-needed win for the Packers. Leave your comments, and as always, go Pack Go.